all right guys good morning um i'm gonna make this video quick i am in the middle of doing something but i really feel the lord impressing this on my heart to um bless someone so i'm actually gonna read the purpose driven life to you guys in the next video preferably today these videos don't take all day to upload and process it is maybe about 10 something this morning um so you guys should get it this morning um but i just want to talk about are you going to choose ishmael or are you going to choose isaac and it's a topic that we've talked about years before but i'm really feeling this word for somebody and i'm going to read um i'm going to read a few a few scripture verses to you guys um about abraham and isaac and also ishmael um <clears throat> excuse me i won't read all of it because we did do a genesis series and most of you are familiar with the story but i'm just going to kind of hone in on the main points um you know you have choices to make i have choices to make we have choices to make are you going to choose ishmael which represents the world which represents the flesh which represents your own way which represents permissible will and settle and try to help God or just try to rush things or things not looking like they're coming together. So you just birth and create an Ishmael, right? We've talked about that lots of times before. Or are you going to wait on Isaac? Are you going to wait on the promise? Are you going to wait on those things? And we know literally physically that Ishmael and Isaac are, were brothers. You know, they are brothers. They represent two different countries. They represent two different lands. They represent two different nations. They represent two different backgrounds and beliefs. They have two different mothers. They're, they have the same father, but they it's, it's two different perspectives. And if you're used to um, Genesis and reading about Abraham, Isaac, Sarah, Ishmael, um, Hagar, you will kind of know what happened with that situation. But basically, just to give you guys a gist before we jump into reading, because like I said, I won't make this video long. Um, Hagar was Sarah's, she was, was Sarah's, like her um, handmaiden, like her slave girl, pretty much. The Lord had promised Abraham that he was going to um, multiply him and make his descendants great, as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. You know, and they were holding on to that promise for years. I don't mean like one, two, three, four, five years. I mean, for many, 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 many years, they were holding on to it. The Lord, you know, confirmed his word to him and would tell him, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. And he thought that it was going to be from, I believe, forgot the guy's name, um, from someone in his household. And God was like, no, I'm going to bless it through you, through your, through, through you, you know, and, um, he did, you know, but before he did, because the Lord had told them that they were, he was going to do that. You know, he sent confirming words and, you know, they got impatient. Really, he listened to Sarah instead of telling Sarah, but God had a purpose with Ishmael as well. But um, instead of, instead of saying, Hey, Sarah, God promised us this when she was like, she was getting impatient. She was like, no, take, take my, um, my servant Hagar, you know, maybe basically like he's going to do it this way even though they had already had the word of the Lord prior, but, um, and patience and vulnerability, those things can do a lot, you know? So, and, um, and it can cause a lot. So, um, he did, he slept with her and, you know, she began getting like kind of resentful towards Sarah and kind of like, I don't want to say bucking back towards her, but she kind of started feeling herself a little bit, if you will. And then it started becoming some animosity between them to a point where even Hagar had left, you know, and the angel of the Lord had met her when she was out, I believe in the desert or somewhere far. He was like, you know, you got to return and go back and obey her. But then Sarah started treating her kind of wrong, but it was her idea. And then it caused friction between Abraham with, you know, the, with them, them too, because Sarah's is really his wife. And then he got this situation with Hagar, who did not ask to be in this situation, you know, and the child from her and you know isaac is ishmael grew eventually isaac did come along you know and if you go and you read the chapters like between those you can see like how what how, like how things were spiritually and physically as well because it was a while where god did not speak to him like he used to speak to him but he did end up speaking back to him and he was still god's friend god still always looked out for abraham and eventually you know, um, Sarah was like, they have to go, you know, they've got to go, they have to leave, 
you know, and he didn't want them to leave. But I think he sent them like with some milk and I don't know if it's milk. He sent them with some stuff like to drink and some food and basically like y'all peace out. You know, you y'all got the bounce. He didn't want to do that because that's his son, you know, but they had to leave. And then um, it got to the point where that stuff had ran out. And uh, I'm going to read it to you guys as well. But this was this word was burning on me for somebody because um, we all face situations in life whether it be past or present or even a future situation where you'll have to make a choice if you're going to choose Isaac or Ishmael. Like I said, we talked about this back in like 2016. We also talked, well, not on the YouTube channel, my other group before the YouTube channel. And then on the YouTube channel, we have um, visited this a couple of times. But um, anyway, it got to the point where um, the Ishmael was about to, like they ran out of it and they kind of like just stuck out there. And so, you know, she turned her head because she didn't want to see her son die. He see her die. It was painful for her. And, you know, the angel of the Lord came to her basically. It was like the Lord heard the, the cry of the boy. He coming for the cry of the boy because you got to remember God had covenant with Abraham. So even though the seed wasn't what he wanted, he still blessed it. And, you know, they gave her the word that God is basically the angel gave her the word. Like the Lord is going to look out for you, Hagar, you know. Um, he, and God did provide for her. I believe that's where, um, Elroy, the guy who sees me that, um, she said that to him or something like that, or that name of God came up. That's not the only place in the Bible. I believe that it came up, but it came up and, um, yeah, he came for the cry of the boy and he was like, you know, he's going to bless him and make him a, a great nation. People, he ain't going to be against him. He's going to be against people. And basically he just going to be like, he didn't say this. I'm just kind of summing it up so I can get into the reading. Like he basically going to be like, I don't know. Like to me, like he just basically gonna be like a rare breed. Like Isaac is more like the promised child, you know, and how God is showing me to release it to you guys this morning is, um, are you going to wait for your promise? Your promise could be a job. Your promise could be a spouse. Your promise could be ministry. Your promise could be an opportunity. Your promise could be business. Your promise could be the betterment of yourself a better you, a better life. And then your Ishmael could represent a physical person. You know, like we did do a Genesis series last year, back in like um 2019, you know, and we talked about Lot and everything a few times and what Lot represents in our lives. And you know, your, your Ishmael could be a distraction. Your Ishmael, because even if you look today between descendants of Ishmael and Isaac you can see the wars even now today you know um Ish Ishmael represents I believe like um I believe like the Iranians and the, and the Saudi Iraq people if I'm wrong somebody please correct me but those those that type of um culture and you know they are blessed with oil and different things but look at how they don't get along with Israel they don't get along with um, God's chosen people. Even to this day, it's still, you know, animosity between those those two groups. It's not necessarily between Isaac and Ishmael per se, because they're no longer here with us um, physically, but the seed, you know, in the Bible. And that's one thing about the Bible. The Bible is going to prove true. You know, and look how God has blessed his people. Those are his chosen people, you know, it's Israel and you know, and we've talked a lot about that. So I'm not going to get deep into that this morning. You know, if you missed those videos, check them out. It goes more into fuller context. But, you know, are you going to settle? Are you going to trust God? And there are some of us in our lives that have birthed some Ishmaels or they have given birth to um, opportunities like Ishmaels and produce Ishmaels results. But that don't mean that Isaac don't have that. That doesn't mean that God doesn't have an Isaac for you. So I'm just kind of putting that in y'all spirit this morning putting that in your ear giving you something to think about are you in a situation where you're settling are you waiting on god are you trying to birth the ishmael and you talking about god bless this ishmael when god promised you isaac you know so let's just read a little bit um i kind of just wanted to give you guys a gist of that but i kind of i'm not going to read everything i'm going to just read um like the call of abram I'm going to read what I'm, I'm probably not going to read the call. I'm probably going to read the covenant and then we're going to get into Hagar and Ishmael. And then um, I'll probably give you, I'm going to try to read as much as possible in this time, whatever. I don't get a chance to, you could check out the Genesis series. 
it's on the replay on the Bible study playlist, or you just can read it. But let's just read. I'm not going to read the call of Abram, but basically in Genesis 12, the Lord had told Abram, leave his country, his people, his father's household and go to the land. He's going to show him. He's going to make him into a great nation. He's going to bless him. He's going to make his name great. He's going to be a blessing. God's basically going to bless those that bless him and curse whoever curses him and people. And like all the peoples on earth is going to be blessed through Abram. Through First, he was Abram before it was Abraham. Like Sarai, before she was... um. Sarah, I believe she was Sarai. So God changed it. He he gave them a name change and a life change. And basically, Abram did leave. He he um he took Lot with him. He wasn't supposed to. He took Sarai and the possessions. And you know, God favored him. You know, He did favor him. So you can go. You can read thirteen. Abram and Lot separate. Abram rescues Lot. Fourteen. You know, um, God's covenant with Abram is what we're going to read now. So basically, um. Abram had, I'm not going to read this, but basically Abram had, had rescued Lot. Remember God told him, leave, leave everything, your father's house and everyone in your father's house. Well, Lot ended up coming along too. So that was a, a red flag as well, but God still blessed Abram, but Lot went through some things as well. So basically he had um, to rescue Lot from, there was a war. Uh, so there was a war with these different Kings. It was going out to, in, and it was in a place where Lot was. And Abram basically had to go rescue his nephew. Somebody had escaped and reported to Abram like what was going on, you know, and basically they went and they, um, he rescued them, him and like 300 something trained men. And then, um, this is what Melchizedek, King of Salem came in. We did some videos on him and, um, I'll just read this part 18. Then Melchizedek, King of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest. Cause this is after Abram had returned from defeating, um, the Keter Lomer men, um, the Kings and the people that basically God had gave Abram favor. Okay. So then, um, Melchizedek, King of Salem, Jerusalem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. He blessed Abram saying that many believe that this is Jesus Christ. I believe also this is Jesus Christ because Melchizedek doesn't have, it said that he doesn't have like no father no mother, no, um, when I say no father or mother, um, we know that father God is his father, but he's like, it's, it's, it gives you things where you can see, like, it's not a natural person. So I believe that Jesus did come in the order of Melchizedek and I did do some videos on that. So we're not in that today. So then Melchizedek, King of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God, most high. He blessed Abram, saying, blessed to be Abram by God. Most high creator of heaven and earth and blessed be God most high who delivered your enemies into your hand. Because remember, even before Abram had kids or even accumulated even more and more wealth, you know, God had gave him a promise back in 12. Now we in 14, you know, then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God, most high creator of heaven and earth. And have taken an oath that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the throng of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. Now, that is a, a word within a word for someone. But let's keep reading. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me, to Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them have their share. Now we're getting into, I just wanted to just read a little bit of that. Now we're getting into um, Genesis 15 and then 16. Um, so you can see God's covenant with Abram and then Hagar and Ishmael. And then if we have time, I'm going to read about, um, you know, um, the covenant of circumcision, you know, when, when they had came, well, the three visitors had came as well, but they had received the word beforehand. I hope I don't have to do two videos, but if I do, I'm just going to be obedient as far as this word, I mean, but, um, let me just. Let me just bless you guys with this. So God's covenant with Abram, because this is it's just for somebody to think about. It, this is a word for someone. So God's covenant with Abram. So after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid. afraid oh, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. And shield represents like um your, your sovereignty, like your favor. He, God is covering him. Basically, God telling him, I got you. You're a very great reward. I'm your shield. Your reward be very great. But Abram said, oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? See, remember, I kind of gave you guys a gist. Now we're actually reading what the Bible says. So you guys can know. But most of you do know. But I'm just saying, I always try to point y'all back to the word. 
So, but Abram said, oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliza Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no children. So a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And that's what God is saying to someone. So shall your offspring be. So shall your promise be that God have for you. Your promise, your, your Isaac, and I'm not taking nothing out of context because Isaac was who he was for a reason. Ishmael was who he was for a reason. But Isaac represents the perfect will of God and promise and Ishmael represents the flesh. And it's like, what are we going to decide? What are we going to choose? Somebody say decisions, decisions. But when you really in Christ, you really have to want to make the right decision. Because Ishmael, and I can just tell you guys some personal experience, just like many of you already noticed. You know, Ishmael comes with so many things. Ishmael comes with so many things. You know what I'm saying? So, look. So, Abram, so look, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans. Remember, we read that already. Well, in the other videos to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, oh, sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? Because see, the land is greater than what he can do in his own strength. This is God's covenant with Abram. See, when God see that you move in faith, and you obey him, going back to 12, when, when the Lord called him, he going to begin to reveal more and more things to you. He will. I'm telling you guys, he will. And many of you know that he will. So the Lord said to him, we getting back to the word, bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all, brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the house opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. <clears throat> As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in the country, not their own. And we did read um, Bible studies on this, and they will be enslaved and mistreated for a hundred years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age. I believe we're going to have to do two videos on this, so I'm going to label it part one and part two, and then do the purpose driven life. I know the Lord would be pleased that I'm, I'm going to do that. So thank you, Lord. So, but I'll punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at an old age at a good old age in the fourth generation your descendants will come back here for the sin of the amorites has not yet reached its full measure when the sun has set and darkness had fallen a smoking fire pot and a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces on that day the lord made a covenant with abram and said to your descendants i get his land from the river or wadi the river was the wadi river of egypt to the great river the euphrates the land of the kenites Kenizzites, Catmonites, Hittites, Parasites, Raphites, Amorites, Canaanites, Gergesites, and Jebusites. And we talked about the 10 giants in your lives from um, Dr. John Paul Jackson. I've given you guys that probably over 30 times to so check it out on YouTube. Um, it's on there and it'll tell you about the 10 giants in your lives and different things like that. Um, now we get into Genesis 16, Hagar and Ishmael. Let me get some water. Still got on my night clothes, guys. That's why I have the camera not on me right now because I'm in here spending some time with God and I'm also in here working on some business stuff. And the Lord just highlighted this to me to record for today. He was like, can I record it now instead of later on? And I'm like, sure, Lord. So that's what I'm doing. So Hagar and Ishmael. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And then you have to remember at this time, they're very, they're, they're up in years. God can work miracles. God who, who made the body can touch the body, but like physically to some other people and to them, it was like, how's this going to work with our, how old we are, but they still had a promise from the Lord. And that is a word of encouragement for someone. It don't matter how old it look or the time you got to hold on to the promises of God. Cause a lot of times, like I told you guys, a lot of times the word of God is what's going to help to get you through and carry through. 
All right, so now Sarah, Ab Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. But remember that God just gave him a covenant in 15. Okay, remember God blessed him with this whole lot situation. He called him. He gave him, he gave him these blessings. But here go the flesh. Here go the impatience. And God still blessed Sarah as well. You know, she's a mighty woman of God, but we're just seeing spiritually what's going on and physically and how both have different implications. They both have principles, you know? So look, they have implications and they have principles, I mean. So look, so she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children, but God already promised him you see what I'm saying? So look, go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. So he was saying, well, God, you going to, what? Eliezer are going to inherit the estate. God was like, no, I'm going to do it through your own womb. And if basically, you know, Sarah, his wife, that means she's going to have to be the one to do it through. God ain't tell him nothing about Hagar in 15, chapter prior. You know, and there's this quote talking about, don't doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. I don't know who it came from, credit to them, but. That quote has helped got me through a lot in my journey as well. But that's what I'm saying. Go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. So he not saying, um, Sarah, I know time didn't pass or such and such, but you know, God made a covenant with me or let's remember, refresh and remind ourselves and hold on to the word. He like, no, nah, I'm, I'm down. Look, so Abram agreed to what Sarah said. So after Abram had been, Living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. And then that could have been the test as well for God to see how long are you going to wait for me? I know sometimes when God detests me and I'm like, God, I got to go through all this to get to this. But he, he, was, he was doing something in me and through me. And sometimes God does have to test us, you know. So look, May servant Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. So you see where the enmity and the animosity is going to come because I was here first. But then at the same time, it's like, Sarah, but this was your idea. He agreed, but this was your idea. I'm not laughing like that. But look, so when she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Remember when I gave y'all the gist in the beginning, how she started feeling herself and feeling some type of way? Then Sarah said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. So she, she told him to do it, but she blaming it on him. This kind of reminds me going back to Genesis with Adam and Eve. When God, you know, was, was speaking to them, he basically was like, what's up? What's going on? God ain't say that, but I try to read the Bible in a way I can understand. And, you know, he, um, Adam was like, the woman, the woman you gave me, she did it. Look at Eve. Eve, what's up? The serpent, he did it. Nobody ain't take no accountability. And look at the the results of that. I'm going to have to eat breakfast soon. Let me try to hurry up and close. Look, she said, you are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my servant in your arms. And now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your servant is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. Remember I told you she had love? The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. And I want y'all to let me know in the comment section. What is your viewpoint? If you were Abraham, how would you feel? If you were Sarai, how would you feel? If you was Isaac, how would you feel? We probably won't get into Isaac until part two, which is the next video. But if you was Ishmael, how would you feel? If you were um, Ishmael, Isaac, Hagar, Abraham, Sarah, how would you feel being that? And what has been some of your situations with your Ishmaels and Isaacs in your life, so to say? So look, so Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. So she, she, she going to be blessed as well her seed, right? The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now a child and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael. And Ishmael means God hears, 
right? We know, I believe um, Isaac means laughter. Yeah, Isaac means laugh. He laughs or laughter. And Ishmael means God hears. But the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. Or he will live, live to the east of, right? And then even for... um. For Hagar's, there's some of you on here that you have been Hagar. You didn't ask for the situation. You know, it just happened. It's like there's this saying, you gotta play the the um you gotta play the hand you've been dealt. I agree with that in some context, but in some context I don't. It depends on the hand and who dealt you the hand, I feel, and what you can do about that hand, especially you know you can give it to God. But um I just I understand it a little bit, but um if you were Hagar, how would you feel? So look, so she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. And that's Bear Lahai Roy, or you can even say El Roy, which means well of the living one who sees me. You know, because sometimes you could be going through so much misery. You feel like, God, are you there? Are you real? We're not questioning that he's, that he's real because we know he is. But there are some people that go through some things that really like, God, you real reveal yourself to me. I know God is real because... The way he revealed himself to me and let me know he see me. This misery, this, you know, she went through. Like I said, she didn't ask for that. So that is why the well was called Bear Lahai Roy. It is still there be, between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had born. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. Now I'm going to close this video. And um, when I come back on, we're just going to read a little bit of, we're going to read all of Genesis 17 and Genesis 18, um, the three visitors, but I'm going to stop at verse 15 for Genesis 18. Okay. And um, I pray y'all were blessed.